toy hunting and toy distribution. These are things that go hand in hand with the adult collector and with parents and kids and grandparents who are looking for toys. Whether you're looking for toys at retail or you're ordering online, there is an innate frustration that comes from not being able to find the latest toy product you're looking for. And there's a lot of reasons for this and a lot of background to this. Now, when you're going down the aisle and you see the same product you've seen over and over again, but you can't seem to find the latest wave, that those chase figures you're looking for, that toy that your son or daughter has been asking for for their birthday, and it's sold out online as well, but, but you see people talking about it on, on YouTube and, and selling it on eBay for outrageous prices, it can be frustrated. Or when you just see stacks and stacks of the same characters, yet you know there are new waves out there that are being blocked by the fact that product just keeps stacking up at retail. Now, whether we're talking about the same single figure, which we would call a peg warmer, meaning a figure that is warming, that is <laughs> keeping the pegs sort of, you know, <laughs> at, a, at a nice temperature without actually turning and bringing in hot product, or we're talking about an entire assortment. There can be something so frustrating knowing that every time you go to retail, you see the same figure over and over again, but you click over to any of the toy review sites or you're watching videos, reviews on YouTube, you know that there's new characters out there. You know that they're shipping, but they're not shipping to where you are. Maybe they're in another part of the country. Maybe they're only available online, but they're still sold out. There's a lot of reasons for this, and I want to go behind the scenes and talk about some of that with you. Now, peg warming is not limited at all to bad assortments or bad character selection. It could be directly tied to the entertainment. It could be a case where the character that's made as a toy never actually appears in the movie. This actually happens more often than you think, because there is a two to three year gap between toys being designed and seeing them on shelf. And scripts change a lot. Characters get dropped. There's also issues with the distribution process between how toys are made by the factories, they're shipped overseas, and whether those products are winding up on your doorstep or they're winding up at a retailer near you. It all comes down to the fundamental issue of distribution and how product gets to the consumer. So today, we're going to talk about how toy distribution works and how to do it better. Brought to you by Spectre Creative and me, Scott, Toy Guru Nightlick. You may be asking, who is Scott Toy Guru Nightlick? Well, I've been in the toy industry for a little over 20 years, and I've worked for a variety of companies and a variety of lines, kids, collectors, adults, everyone who loves toys, I tend to have worked on them. And I'm going to share today some of my insight and thoughts on how distribution works. Now, it's not just a game that the toy companies are playing with you by teasing new characters out there at retail that you can't find. Believe me, I know that's frustrating. I'm a toy collector myself. I often say it's kind of like the hair club for men working in the toy industry. I'm also a customer in addition to working on it. Now, whether it's dealing with retail closing or dealing with shipments from China, everything starts with spreadsheets and assortments. You're going to see on any toy at market, fine print at the bottom, usually on the back panel, and it's going to list out two things. Well, besides the legal warnings, it's going to list out an assortment number and an individual figure number. So here we have an individual figure. This character is going to have a specific toy number assigned to him or her or it. I guess everything is an it because toys aren't alive, right? And then you're going to have an assortment of figures that those individual figures fit into. Now, retailers are usually ordering based on an assortment, meaning they're going to get a what, what collectors often call a wave of figures. So they'll place a order against getting the entire wave, not necessarily against one single figure, which is called open stock ordering. A lot of times Amazon or Entertainment Earth or Big Bad Toy Store will order that way. 
Now the problem with ordering in assortments is a lot of times the toy buyer for a large big box retailer will order an entire year's worth of product against one wave instead of ordering a little bit at a time. This is why you often get the first wave of figures sitting at retail. Sometimes it has to be because a lot of retailers have rules that in order to set a product on shelf, they have to place 40 to 60% of the order against the very first wave. And this is why wave one, and this happened with me when I was running DCU Classics, Wave 1 will sit around forever simply because retailers have this rule where they have to order product and it just sits and sits and sits and grows old because in order to set it on the planogram, they're required to have a certain amount of product in their warehouse. So they're pouring all of their orders into one wave and one assortment. Now, this is something that just drives people crazy. And it requires a little bit of re-education, not just from the consumer standpoint, but from the retailer and the manufacturer standpoint as well. One solution I had was the idea of what I called ordering very lightly, but ordering often. Meaning, instead of putting your full order against the first wave in order to set product, spreading that order throughout the year so that you got fresh product constantly and were not relying on all of your sales being behind a single wave. Whether this was required for retail set or it's just, for lack of better words, an inexperienced buyer not understanding the way toy product works and that there have to be assortments throughout the year. It's not just one assortment and getting that first wave. Now, I will completely give credit to Hasbro for cracking this in a really neat way. So as an example, right now there are two waves of Marvel Legends at retail. It's uh, February, March 2020 right now. There's the Spider-Man wave and there is this Fantastic Four wave. Now, they're both Marvel Legends waves, but what Hasbro did, and what I think is very clever, is, and I wish I did this with uh, DC Universe Classics, each wave is a completely different assortment. So the sale of one wave does not affect the sale of another. So if you have a wave that bombs at retail or does not hit sales expectations, as they like to say, then that wave can be put on clearance without affecting future waves. It's a neat idea. Another thing that comes up is Europe. Why are people seeing toys in Europe that never get distributed in the US? Is, this can be frustrating for both customers and for retailers. The thing is, is that Europe is basically living in the past. And what I mean by that is they're usually one to two years behind the US in terms of product and entertainment. So entertainment and product that is, say, you know, j just fading in the US is just is hitting Europe a year or two later. So that's why you see tail end product like Titus here only shipping to Europe and never showing up in America because Europe is ordering product that's about one to two years old and is often already done in the US. All right, so how do we do this better? How do we re-educate? Well, I'm gonna plug my company because that's what we do. Spectre Creative is all about understanding that emotional connection between consumer and product. And what we do best is we fix problems like this. We fix distribution by bridging the gap and working with the retailer and the manufacturer and bringing in the emotional needs of the consumer who's actually going to buy the product by making those emotional needs upfront and a big part of the production and buying experience then you get happier customers because product will move faster at retail. And of course, if you have happier customers who are buying more product, you're going to have better sales numbers. It's all a cycle, but it all, all starts with understanding the emotional needs of the consumer. And whether you're dealing with the adult collector or mom and kids, you don't need to bang your head against the wall. There are solutions, and that's what Spectra Creative is here to help with. So if you need help with distribution, branding, manufacturing, getting product to retail, call us today. We want to help. This is what we do. We have years of experience, not just in toys, but our staff 
includes child play therapists who really understand the way kids and collectors engage with product. Like I said, I'm a collector myself. I'm also a parent. And that really sets me apart and sets our company apart from pretty much anyone else out there. So if you're looking for solutions, we're here to help. This has been Scott Toy Guru Nightlick with another look at Toy Trends.